بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا مولانا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم أما بعد فيا همة الشيخ أحضري لنا بهذا المحضري وتعطي في بنظرة تأتي لنا بظفري السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته uh, I welcome each and everyone to uh, our uh, first lesson uh, in uh, this uh, beautiful series, inshallah, on the explanation of the renowned uh, poem uh, on the seerah of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by Imam al-Busiri uh, titled as the Hamziyah. So marhaban bikum, ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome to all of you. I welcome you on behalf of myself. I welcome you on behalf of the entire Faida uh, channel on YouTube. Marhaban bikum. Allah bless you. Alhamdulillah. Uh, we've just come out of the month of uh, Rabi'ul Awwal. And Rabi'ul Awwal is a time for us to reconnect to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, revive our love for him and uh, reaffirm uh, our loyalty and our dedication to him sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So Rabi al-Awwal is that great reminder. However, uh, as our mashayikh say, uh, our love and our attachment to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam should not be limited to Rabi al-Awwal. So Rabi al-Awwal, it reignites the love for him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But after that is the process of learning about him sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So Rabi'ul Awwal is about loving him, but the rest of the year then should be followed by learning about him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the two cannot be separated because you can only love him if you learn about him. And the more you learn about him, the more you love him. So uh, uh, alhamdulillah, uh, Rabi'ul Awwal, you know, uh, just excited our love for Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And inshallah, with that excitement of love that we have, uh, that we had in Rabi al-Awwal, uh, we are now to continue uh, for the rest of the year to learn about him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because uh, he is not a true lover who only beloved once a year, one day a year, or one week a year, or, or one month a year, then you don't really love that person. So if you really love somebody, uh, you remember them for the whole year. You think about them for the whole year. You learn about them for the whole year. And that's what uh, this uh, course, inshallah, is all about. Uh, we come out of Rabi al Awwal, and in Rabi al Awwal, we were singing the, the Hamziya uh, and the Burda, uh, the Maw reciting the Maulids. But now, inshallah, is uh, the time to learn the meanings of, of these beautiful poems that we were reciting, to learn. Uh, more about our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that when the next Rabi Ulawal comes, we are uh, all, you know, our love has, has increased tenfold by that time. Because the more you learn about him, the more you're going to love him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So inshallah, that was uh, uh, our niya in, in hosting uh, and, and doing this class, Alhamdulillah. And uh, I've previously uh, done uh, courses uh, on the blessed Qasilatul Burda by the same author. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I taught the Burda at least five times, uh, the entire poem, Alhamdulillah. Uh, and uh, we also uh, taught uh, the famous Mudariya poem by Imam al Busiri. It's called Al Qasida al Mudariya, and it's usually recited in many gatherings, particularly where I grew up in Makkah and Medina, is recited after the Burda. Uh, so after the Buddha is read, they recite the poem Al-Mudariya by Imam Al-Busiri as well. And it, it usually, in fact, they're usually printed together in many in many books. So the Mudariya starts with, Ya Rabbi Salli Ala Al-Mukhtari Min Mudari Wal Anbiya Wa Jami'ul Rusli Jami'ul Rusli Ma Zukiru. So it's beautifully recited. So alhamdulillah, we, uh, I did some lectures, uh, uh, lessons in explaining the Qasidat al-Mudariya of Imam al-Busiri. 
Uh, and thereafter, that is followed by another poem by Imam al busiri entitled al qasida Al-Muhammadiyah. Al-Muhammadiyah. So Alhamdulillah, I've, uh, I also did lessons on al qasida Al-Muhammadiyah and I explained the al qasida Al-Muhammadiyah, Alhamdulillah, line by line as well. Uh, and that's also recited after the Burda and the Mudariya. Uh, Muhammadun Sayyidul uh, Arabi wa Al-Ajami. Muhammadun Khairu Man Yamshi Ala Qadami. Uh, and it's a beautiful poem. And it's called Muhammadiyah because every couplet in that poem starts uh, uh, with the name Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So every line is Muhammadun, Muhammadun, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. So Alhamdulillah, since uh, I, I, I thought uh, the Burda, the full Burda, Alhamdulillah, 160 couplets, and I thought uh, that it's the full uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad uh, Mudariya, and I, I, I thought, Alhamdulillah, uh, the full uh, Muhammadiyya, uh, it was uh, my intention and for a while, uh, as well as uh, the requests of uh, many brothers uh, that I should also teach the Hamziya, which is really uh, the largest, the longest uh, poem by Imam al busiri in praise of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Alhamdulillah, we uh, made the Niyya and uh, we've been planning this class for a while, but inshallah, today it commences. And uh, the, 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 the previous classes that I've mentioned uh, or all, alhamdulillah, they're all, uh, Ya Rasulullah, they're all um, found on the internet, on the on YouTube. So you can YouTube them, you'll find them, my, my lessons on the Burda, uh, my lessons on uh, al Mudariya, and my lessons on the Muhammadiyya. So those of you who are interested in, in, in you know, uh, learning the, the, those poems as well and their meanings and studying them, and you didn't attend those regional classes, you can always find them on the internet, alhamdulillah, they're there on YouTube. Uh, but inshallah, uh, tonight we commence with uh, the Qasida al-Hamziya. Uh, this Qasida by Imam al-Busiri, uh, it's one of the most uh, renowned and celebrated and uh, recited poems in praise of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam throughout the Muslim world. Uh, it's only surpassed by the Burda. So Imam al busiri he wrote the Burda and he wrote the Hamziya. Uh, and, and the Burda, of course, is the most famous of all Madih, uh, praises of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but followed by the Hamziya. So it is a poem that's recited uh, throughout uh, the different Zawiyas of the different Tariqas, whether you're in Morocco, or whether you're in Algeria, whether you're in Tunisia, whether you're in Egypt or Syria, or Yemen or Makkah and Medina or Iraq or, uh, you know, anywhere in the Muslim world, uh, you'll find uh, the Hamziya is uh, particularly recited. Uh, and uh, it's uh, beloved, uh, particularly to the scholars. And the reasons are obvious because the Hamziya uh, it's one of the most beautiful poems uh, elaborating on the qualities, the characteristics, the miracles, uh, the akhlaq, the virtues, and the maqams uh, of the beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam in a most beautiful uh, verse, in a most beautiful uh, uh, of couplets. So Imam al busiri really put his entire, uh, uh, you know, poetic training and excellence and genius into this poem. So purely from an Arabic uh, poetry, shi'r point of view, it's an epic poem. It's an amazing poem. Uh, even if somebody, uh, you know, is not into madih, but they will just enjoy the Arabic of this poem because it is so beautiful and it is so eloquent. It is so sweet. So Alhamdulillah, uh, this uh, poem by Imam al busiri uh, uh, he, he authored it, you know, um, a long time ago, uh, radiallahu an 800 years ago. Uh, but Alhamdulillah, it is still well and alive and recited till today. Uh, 
many scholars have written many commentaries on it and explanations of it. Uh, and uh, amongst them is a very large sharh uh, explanation by the renowned uh, scholar of Islam uh, and, and faqih of the Shafi'i Mazhab, the Shaykh al-Islam, uh, al-Hafiz ibn Hajar al-Makki. Uh, he has an entire uh, explanation of the Hamziya, a sharh uh, called Allahumma uh, salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Umm al-Qura, Afdal al-Qira li Qura'i Umm al-Qura. So uh, this is uh, the, the book by Imam, uh, and you can see it's a very thick book. Uh, it's also called Al-Minah uh, al-Makkiya fi Sharh al-Hamziya. Al-Minah al-Makkiya fi Sharh al-Hamziya. So this is by the great scholar Al-Hafiz uh, Ibn Hajar Al-Haytami uh, Al-Makki, who was the gigantic scholar of Islam, a faqih of the Shafi'i Mazhab, a mufti, and he authored uh, this sharh commentary on uh, the Hamzi of Imam al-Busiri. And there are many other uh, uh, commentaries on it as well uh, that explain the poem line by line. Uh, nevertheless, the sharh or the commentary I will be, inshallah, using in these lessons and uh, elaborating upon, inshallah, will be the sharh uh, of uh, our grand uh, master and, and, and sheikh uh, and imam, uh, the wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the imam of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Sheikh Sidi Ahmad al-Tijani, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu arda, al-Qutb al-Maktum, uh, he also had the sharh on the Hamziya, and that's what, inshallah, I'm going to be reading from. So we're going to read the lines of, of the Hamziya, and we're going to read the explanation by Sheikh Ahmad Tijani, radiyallahu anh. Of course, both of them are in Arabic, so I'm going to be explaining it in English, and that's just going to be my role, inshallah, because uh, the poem uh, the poem speaks for itself, and the Sheikh, radiyallahu anh, speaks for himself. And this is a copy of uh, the, the sharh of the Hamziya by uh, the Imam Sidi Ahmad al-Tijani radiallahu an. So uh, it's called Al-Irshadatu Al-Rabbaniya Bil-Futuhat Al-Ilahiya Fi Sharh Al-Hamziya Fi Madhi Khair Al-Bariya So uh, which means uh, the divine uh, guidances uh, and, and, and the spiritual openings in the explanation of the Hamziya of Imam al-Busiri. Al, uh, al so, uh, uh, interestingly though, uh, although this sharh was, is by Sidi Ahmad al-Tijani radiallahu an, uh, it wasn't written by him, it was dictated by him. So, it was written down and transcribed by his uh, beloved Murid and his Khalifa and his uh, senior most muqaddam uh, or you know representative in the tariqa Sidi uh, Ali Harazim radiyallahu an so this uh, uh, book by Sidi Ahmad al-Tijani radiyallahu an uh, is not actually a book it's actually lessons that he gave in explaining the Hamziya so alhamdulillah we are honored to be, be, be following his sunnah in that uh, it's lessons he gave in explaining the Hamziya and as he would give a lesson, he would explain a few lines. And uh, Sidi Ali Harazim radiallahu an would write down the entire lesson uh, of the Sheikh radiallahu an. And when Sayyidina Sheikh radiallahu an uh, was done uh, uh, with, you know, teaching the entire poem, then uh, Sidi Ahmad Sukairaj, uh, Ahmad, uh, uh, Sidi Ali Harazim radiallahu an had compiled all of those lessons in one book which he then presented to Sayyidina Sheikh radiallahu an and uh, Sidi Ahmad Tijan radiallahu an approved of that book and was very pleased that his lectures were all uh, compiled into a book by Sidi Ali Harazim radiallahu an. So uh, alhamdulillah, uh, we're honored uh, to you know be teaching from the words of this wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, uh, before we commence on, with the actual poem, I just wanted to have uh, a word or two about uh, the, the, the on the topic of uh, Madih. Madih 
uh, or madh means uh, poetry in praise of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Or madih al nabawi. The full full name is madih al nabawi. Madih or madh in Arabic means to praise. And madih al nabawi is to praise the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Prophetic praise. Uh, so madih poetry is a very important uh, genre of uh, Islamic uh, poetry. And it is as old as Islam. Uh, we, we live in a time where, unfortunately, due to ignorance, uh, you, you find people nowadays who kind of like uh, question the whole concept of praising the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam and particularly, you know, uh, writing poems or reciting poems or singing poems in praise of the Prophet ﷺ. There are people in our time who have a problem with that, unfortunately. And I'm not referring to uh, Yahud or Nasara. I'm referring to Muslims who have a problem with that. Uh, and, uh, and I believe it's due to ignorance. It's ignorance. Uh, and you, you might even hear people saying that it's bid'ah to, to praise the Prophet ﷺ or to, to you know, recite poems in his praise and or sing these poems. This is bid'ah, and you know, this is not from Islam. And in Islam, uh, all we do is we follow the Prophet Sallallahu We believe in the Prophet Sallallahu we follow him, and that's it. But we don't have to praise him, or, or you know, we don't have to, to really uh, love him so much. And so this, it, this type of mindset it's, it's a great uh, uh, danger to the Iman of the Ummah. And uh, it's, it's, it's a dagger in the heart of Islam, really. Once we, we, we take away the love of the Prophet ﷺ from the heart of the Muslims, and we take away uh, uh, the, 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 the respect that the Muslims have for their Prophet ﷺ, which they express in these poems, this love that they have, the respect that they have, this attachment that they have to the Prophet ﷺ, and they, they express it in these poems. If we take that away, then that's like taking the battery, you know, out of your phone or out of your cloth. It kills the Iman of the Ummah. Uh, because everybody believes in God. All religions believe in God. Everybody believes in Allah. But it is the attachment to Muhammad ﷺ that makes us Muslims. It is our attachment to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that makes us the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest ummah, uh, the Muslimin. So this is a, a, a fitna, and I, I believe it's part of ignorance. It's based on ignorance, because if you study the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, you realize and you learn that uh, Praising the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is something uh, that has been happening for 1,400 years. It's been happening from the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. So uh, yes, the first people to praise the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were the Sahaba themselves, were his own companions. and. We have uh, numerous poems uh, that were written by the uh, companions of the Prophet ﷺ. But let me go further than that and say that the first one to praise the Prophet ﷺ was and is Allah himself. So before we look at any book uh, uh, in praise of the Prophet ﷺ, any poem, any diwan, uh, collection of poetry. Uh, the first book we need to look at if you want to see the praises of the Prophet Sallallahu is the Holy Quran. It's the Holy Quran. So it is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala who Allah uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Muhammad who praised the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the most. In fact, the best praises of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are from the Holy Quran. Nobody can praise him better than Allah. And uh, it's one thing for creation to praise the best of creation. Creation praises creation. 
but it's another thing completely for the creator the rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala to praise his creation so when allah himself is praising muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you can imagine the status of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam so the quran is filled uh, with uh, uh, ayat that praise the beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and there's a book by one of the scholars called shanu uh, habib uh, rahman min ayat al quran uh, the the status uh, uh, of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the sublime rank of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam based on the ayat of the quran where the compiles praise of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam like uh, indeed uh, your character a liar or when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna a'tainaka al-kawthar indeed o muhammad o our beloved i have given you the kawthar which is the complete blessing uh, or when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um, wa rafa'na lak zikrak that indeed o muhammad we have raised your uh, praise for you So the Quran is the first praise for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and after that uh, before we even go to the sahaba I still want to take one more stop the second person to praise the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself because we have many hadith many statements of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he himself uh, highlighted his own uh, uh, status so there are hadith for example where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam authentic hadith where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh, ana habibullah wa la fakhr i am the beloved of god and i don't say it uh, to boast i'm not boasting i'm just stating a fact uh, ana sayyidu walad adam wa la fakhr i am the master the chief of all the children of adam alayhi salam of all humanity wala fakhr in other words i'm the greatest of all mankind and i don't say it to boast ana awwalu shafi'in wa mushaffa'in i am the first one who will intercede on the day of qiyamah and whose intercession will be accepted by allah and i don't say it to boast ana awwalu man yadkhul al-jannah and i am the first one to enter jannah on the day of qiyamah and so on and so on uh, there are many a hadith where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam praised himself so uh, uh, and that is obviously by the command of allah because we know that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam can never say anything out of his own wa ma yantiqu an alhawa in huwa illa wahyu yuha Allah says in the Quran that indeed my prophet never speaks of his own whim whatever he says is revealed by us so when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said these things about himself uh, he is uh, only fulfilling the command of Allah so he used to praise himself also not all the time we also know that he was the humblest of allah's creation but there were moments where he praised himself so that the people realize his status ana akhshakum billah nobody fears allah more than me ana a'lamukum billah nobody knows allah more than me ana a'badukum lillah nobody worships allah more than me so uh, there are many times uh, ahadith where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam praises himself so uh, if he praises himself how can we who are his ummah not praise him and, and 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 repeat his great qualities and his his uh, ranks so it is a sunnah and then we come to the sahaba the sahaba of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam praised him uh, both in prose and poetry so both uh, uh, in 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 their statements Uh, normal statements and in poetry so we have uh, lots of uh, uh, statements narrated from the sahaba radiyallahu anhum numerous statements 
praising the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Some of the Sahaba said his face was like uh, the full moon. Uh, some of the Sahaba said his face was like the sun. Uh, some of the Sahaba said um, he was the most beautiful of people. Some of them have are narrated to have said he was the bravest of people. Uh, some of them narrated to have said he was the nicest and kindest of people. Some of them are narrated to have said Kana Ajwa than Nas. He was the most generous of people, right? And 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 so on and so on. They uh, they praise his, his his appearance. They praise his bodily features. Uh, uh, they they praise his character, his speech. Uh, they praise his uh, actions and everything about him. So many hadiths that the Sahaba uh, statements of the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praising him, and that's just in statements. Uh, and now we come to poetry. Because the Hamziya is a poem. So we're talking about poems here. Uh, we also have the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praising him in poems. And uh, everybody knows of the famous uh, uh, poet of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, Sayyiduna uh, uh, Hassan uh, bin Sabit radiallahu anhu. So Sayyidina Hassan bin Sabit al-Ansari uh, uh, an, was the official Shair Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the official poet of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And uh, he used to write poems uh, defending the honor of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and praising the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He's the one who is narrated to have said those famous couplets that everybody knows. وأحسن منك لد النساء كعيب كأنك قد خلقت كما تشاء that يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا رسول الله more beautiful than you my eyes have never seen and more beautiful than you no woman has ever given birth to any child more beautiful than you خلقت مبرا من كل عيب you were created uh, free of any blemish, of any fault, Ya Rasulullah. You were created perfect, free of any fault and defect. As if you yourself, uh, uh, as if you were created exactly the way you, you wanted yourself to be created. In other words, uh, you, you're created so perfect, like as if you yourself uh, were, were, you know, oversaw uh, your entire creation to make sure that you have no no uh, uh, fault. So subhanAllah, and the, that's by Sayyidina Hassan bin Sabit radiallahu anhu. And he has many poems in praise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Hassan bin Sabit, by the way, uh, when he would write a poem to praise the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he would uh, come to him and say, "Ya Rasulullah, uh, I have a poem." You know, after one of the prayer in the masjid, he would say, "Ya Rasulullah, I have a poem for you." So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, you know, and he would ask him, "Can I recite it to you, Ya Rasulullah? Can I read the poem to you?" So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would tell him, uh, "Hold on, O Hassan, hold on, go on my member." Climb on my member, on my pulpit, and read from there. Allahu bi ruhil qudus that may Allah assist you with the Holy Spirit, which is Jibril alayhi salam. So he would ask him to uh, climb on the member, and remember the member of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is where he used to stand and teach the Deen from, and no Sahabi would dare climb the member of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even uh, after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left the physical dunya and Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an became the Khalifa, uh, he would, uh, when he climbed the member, he, the member was three steps and he only climbed two steps and he didn't climb the third step. So when they said to him, Ya Abu Bakr, oh Abu Bakr, why don't you climb to the third step? 
He said, I'm not worthy of standing where the Prophet وسلم, used to stand. I can't stand where Rasulullah used to stand. Uh, and when Sayyidina uh, Umar radiallahu an, uh, became the, the Khalifa, when he went on the member, he's the ruler now, he's the Amir now, he climbed one step only. He didn't go on the second or the third step. So when they asked him about that, he said, uh, I'm not worthy of standing where Rasulullah stood or even where Abu Bakr stood. I'm not worthy of standing in the same place as Rasulullah sallam, or even Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. So uh, look at the other for the member of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Yet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam would ask Sayyidina Hassan bin Sabit to go on that member and recite the praises, the poems in praise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So can we imagine the status of uh, uh, the, the person, the, the mu'min, the believer, the lover, the muhib, who writes a poem for, for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh, sincerely from his heart. Indeed, their status is great. The status of the maddah. Uh, however, Hassan radiallahu an is not the only poet of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Many other sahaba wrote poems for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Uh, amongst them is the renowned uh, Ka'ab bin Zuhair radiallahu an. So Sayyidina Ka'ab bin Zuhair radiallahu an al Bulubi was actually uh, from the poets of the Kuffar. And he used to write poems insulting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So much so that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had uh, commanded the Muslims to kill him when they find him. Because he has insulted the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in such, such a way that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave the command that Ka'ab must be killed because he has insulted my Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yet, uh, there came a time after the conquest of Makkah where Ka'ab realized the wrongness of his ways and Iman entered into his heart. So he secretly came to Medina hiding his face so that nobody should recognize him until he came to the mosque of the Prophet ﷺ and he revealed himself to the Prophet ﷺ. And some of the Sahaba, they, they, they wanted to kill him, but Rasulullah ﷺ said, hold it. He has come to me. Let him speak. Ka'ab, you know, you, you know, you, you are a wanted man. Uh, what brings you here to me? Uh, are you not scared? So Ka'ab said, Ya Rasulullah, may I reply in poetry, in a poem? So Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, okay, go ahead. So he recited a poem uh, in praise of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, it's one of the most famous poems in the Arabic language. Uh, it's called Banat Su'ad. Banat Su'adu Faqalib al Yawma Madbulu Mutayyamun Israha Lam Yufda Madbulu. Unbitu Anna Rasulallahi Awadani Wal Afwa Anda Rasulillahi Ma'mulu. He says in that poem, I've heard that the Messenger of Allah uh, has threatened me or has asked for my life. I've heard that the Messenger of Allah has asked, you know, has threatened me, uh, has asked for my life, right? And that is the truth because Allah commanded that Ka'ab should be punished for insulting Rasulullah. But then He says in the next line, well, But I also know that the Messenger of Allah is the most forgiving of all people. So while I know that He has uh, asked for my life. I'm wanted by him, but I also know that he is the most forgiving of all people. And then he said, That indeed, the messenger is uh, a, a, a noor uh, which, every, from, 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 which illuminates everyone. Inna Rasulullah la nurun yustada'u bihi. He's a nur, he's a light which illuminates everybody's lives. And indeed, he is a sword from the swords of Allah. So the, he describes the Prophet as a light 
that everybody, the believers benefit from, all those who want the light are going to benefit from that nur, right? And he is also a sword for the enemies of Allah. So Rasulullah Sallallahu is both the nur and the safe. He's a nur for the lovers and he's a safe, the sword for the enemies of Allah. So uh, those who believe in Allah, Rasulullah gives us the nur. And so many poets describe Rasulullah as the nur, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But here, Sayyidina Ka'ab is describing him as the nur. And the Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, uh, then he says, you are a sword. Now, interestingly, uh, Sayyidina Ka'ab radiallahu an, in the, in the next line, he's, he didn't say a sword from the swords of Allah. He said, Muhannadun min suyuf bil hindi maslulu, that you are indeed a, a sword uh, from the swords of India that is unshattered. Uh, you know, against the enemies of God. So he called him a sword from the swords of India because uh, in those days in, in Arabia, the, the swords of India were highly prized and considered to be the best of swords. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard that line, he corrected, he corrected Ka'ab and he said, no Ka'ab, say, Muhannadun min suyuf illahi maslulu. Say that indeed he is a sword unleashed from the swords of Allah. So don't describe the Prophet as the sword of India. It's a quality of praise, but he's greater than that. He said, say uh, sword from the swords of Allah. So the Prophet وسلم, even corrected Sayyidina uh, Ka'ab in that poem uh, and participated in it. So when Ka'ab bin Zuhair was done with that poem, which is a beautiful poem, uh, the Prophet وسلم, said, Oh Ka'ab, we forgive you. We accept your Islam and we forgive you and we give you this gift. And he took off his shawl. The Prophet وسلم, was wearing a shawl. In Arabic, a thick shawl is called burda. Burda. He took off the burda that he was wearing وسلم, and he he put it on Ka'ab as a reward uh, for the beautiful words he had said. And from that, you also learn that if you praise the Prophet وسلم, if you do Madih, Rasulullah will reward you. And as far as we are concerned, this reward was during his lifetime, physical lifetime, and during his spiritual lifetime now. So the Rasulullah is still alive spiritually. So whether you the Sahaba praised him in front of him, or we praise him today. Uh, uh, you know, either way, the reward will be there. The barakah will be there. He will reward those who praise him, but those who praise him sincerely and, and honestly out of true iman and true love. So that poem of Sayyidina Ka'ab bin Zuhair was actually called the Qasiratul Burda. And, and, in, and all the, the scholars that, that refer to that poem before the Burda of Imam al-Busayri, uh, they always, when they used to say the word Burda, Qasiratul Burda, they would refer to the poem of Ka'ab bin Zuhair, radiallahu an, that's Sahabi. Uh, only afterwards, where Imam al busairi also wrote a poem, and he was also blessed with the Burda of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We'll talk about that story again, that uh, Busairi's poem became known as the Burda, uh, and it became more famous. But traditionally, uh, before Imam al busairis time, Whenever the scholars talked about Fasiratul Burda, uh, they uh, would be referring to the poem of Sayyidina Ka'ab bin Zuhair radiallahu anhu. And uh, that Burda uh, remained with the descendants of Sayyidina Ka'ab bin Zuhair radiallahu anhu. So he praised him. Another Sahabi that praised the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was his uncle Al-Abbas. His own uncle, Sayyidina al-Abbas, when they were returning from the battle of Tabuk, he said, Ya Rasulullah, uh, let me praise you. I want to say a few lines in praise of you. So Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, Bismillah. So Sayyidina al-Abbas recited beautiful lines uh, min, uh, which are read by our shuyukh till today in the month of the Mawlid. Min qabliha qibta fi Ya Rasulullah, before, uh, you know, uh, creation of Adam alayhi salam, uh, you know, you were in Jannah.
and then uh, he mentions how then you were uh, Adam uh, uh, Sayyidina Nuh السلام, on the ark تركب السفينة and then after that وردت نار الخليلي مكتتماً and you were secretly with Sayyidina Ibrahim السلام, and he was thrown into the fire meaning your nur was with him وأنت فيه كيف تحترقه and يا رسول الله if your nur was with him how can he burn how can Sayyidina Ibrahim السلام, burn in the fire when he's carrying your nur ya Rasulullah who's saying that not a, a Sufi Shaykh from uh, our time or from recent times, Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu an, the uncle of the Prophet sallam, is saying it to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And then he mentions the Mawlid and he says, وَأَنْتَ لَمَّا وُلِدْتَ أَشْرَقَتِ الْأَرْضُ وَضَاءَتْ بِنُورِكَ الْأُفَقُ And indeed, Ya Rasulullah, when you were born, أَشْرَقَتِ الْأَرْضُ The entire earth was illuminated and not only the earth, وَضَاءَتْ بِنُورِكَ الْأُفَقُ and even the horizons, the skies, were all illuminated uh, and enlightened by your nur, by your light. When Sayyidina al-Abbas was done with the poem, the Prophet وسلم, looked at him and said, La fadba Allahu fuk. Or la fadba fuk, which means that may Allah preserve your mouth, or may Allah, literally, may Allah protect your mouth from every harm. May Allah protect your mouth from every harm. So subhanAllah, this is the, the reward of the one who praises the Prophet Sallallahu The Rasulullah said, may Allah protect your mouth from every harm. But I have mentioned only three uh, examples, but there are many other Sahaba who wrote poems in praise of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A very great Imam uh, uh, from Egypt, an Imam of Hadith and Sirah, uh, Imam Ibn Sayyid al-Nas al-Ya'mari, he, in fact, he's written like large books of the seerah of the Prophet a great Imam. Uh, he actually compiled the names and the poems of uh, all the Sahaba who wrote poems in praise of the Prophet He compiled all of them in one book. Uh, so he, uh, this great Imam Ibn Sayyid al-Nas, uh, the name of the book is Minahul Madh, Gifts of Praise. And in that book, and I have that book here in, with me, I have it here. This is the book, Minahul Madh, by Al Imam uh, uh, Ibn Sayyid al Nas. He lived in the seventh century, so he lived 700 years ago. In that book, in this book here, he compiled the names of 100 Sahaba who praised the Prophet Sallallahu in poems, who wrote poems in praise of the Prophet Sallallahu Some of them wrote very long poems. Some of them wrote short poems. But he compiled all their names and their poems and the poem. So this is an amazing book. Uh, recently, when I was in Mauritania, uh, and I, uh, 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 as you know, I, Alhamdulillah, I, had some, uh, I purchased and obtained some books there of some great scholars. One of the scholars, I learned that one of the scholars in Mauritania wrote a kind of like a, a appendix or a continuation of this book where he found more Sahaba who praised the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he added their names as well. So Imam Ibn Sayyid Nas has about 100 here, but this great Mauritanian scholar has found more names of this other Sahaba as well who praised the Prophet ﷺ in poems and he compiled their poems as well. So it's much more now, more, even much more than a hundred. So imagine if more than a hundred Sahaba wrote poems in praising the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet ﷺ used to, and every one of them read it to the Prophet ﷺ. So it means it's a sunnah to write these poems and it's a sunnah to hear these poems and it's a great act of ibadah. So Imam al-Busayri, whose poem we are going to be studying, did exactly that. He wrote this Hamziya in praise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's more than um, 500 couplets. And it is our intention, inshallah, to go through all of those couplets, the entire poem, line by line, inshallah, and learn their meanings uh, as explained by the noble Imam and Wali of Allah, Shaykhuna wa Sanaduna wa Sayyiduna 
الشيخ سيدي أحمد التيجاني رضي الله تعالى عنه وأرضاه. Uh, this was إن شاء الله uh, an introduction uh, tonight. Uh, I wanted to just introduce the topic of Madih, poetry in praise of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. So we will conclude with this uh, for tonight, uh, إن شاء الله, and the plan to continue with this lesson live uh, every Thursday evening, the same time, inshallah, same place. Uh, and next week, inshallah, we will uh, talk a little bit about Imam al Busairi and Sidi Ahmad al Tijani, radiallahu an, who explained the poem. And then we will, inshallah, read the Sanad to the poem, our Sanad, all the way to Imam al Busairi. And we'll start with the actual poem as well, inshallah, hopefully. Bismillah ta'ala. So, uh, shukran, thank you very much for um, attending this uh, first lesson and dars. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it beneficial for us in the dunya and the akhirah and make it a means for increasing our knowledge and our love for Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and a means for attaining his shafa'a and his intercession uh, in the dunya and in the akhirah. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والفاتح لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته